Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our second graders out there, though everyone is welcome to tune in. This lesson is the second in this week's series. My name is Mrs. Ledford and I'm a second grade teacher at Prescott South Elementary School in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on our website at www.tn.gov education. You can still tune in to today's lesson if you haven't seen our others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons, since today we'll be talking about things we learned previously. Today we will be learning about a fable called The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Before we get started to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need paper and pencil and a surface to write on. Also, you can access the student packet for ELA Grade 2 Lesson 12, which can be found also on our website at www.tn.gov education. Okay, let's begin. Yesterday, we listened to a fable, The Elephant and the Crocodile. And we learn that a fable is a story that usually has animal characters that are trying to solve a problem. The animals will learn a lesson known as the moral. Do you remember the moral of yesterday's fable? Yes, you should work together to succeed. Your assignment yesterday was to write about a time when you worked together with someone to complete a task. What did you choose to write about? Wow, that sounds great. I hope you were successful. Did you encounter any arguments while you worked with someone on the task? Excellent. Some of you may, while others didn't. When working with others, there's always an opportunity for disagreement, but you will have to work through it. Today, our goal is to read a new fable called The Tale of Peter Rabbit and describe how words bring meaning to the text. And you will determine, you'll help me determine the moral of the story. We will begin with me showing you what that looks like and then there will be time for you to practice on your own with my support. Now, finally, I will assign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. Today's fable will include new vocabulary words, and you guys are going to write those down on a piece of paper and draw them to illustrate their meanings. Go ahead and get out your paper now, and we are going to fold that paper to help us organize our work by making what's called a vocabulary graphic organizer. And so first what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and fold it the long skinny way. And remember we call that hot dog style. And then you'll take your hot dog style paper and fold it one more time in half hamburger style to where you have just one piece of square. And then when you open it up, you should have four squares. And I have drawn this for you on my computer screen so that you can at any time you need to today, pause the screen on your video or on your television. And that way you can take a picture of it or have a few more minutes to write down what I'm saying in case I'm moving too quickly. Okay. All right, boys and girls. So you should have four squares. Now I have marked on my board what this looks like on the front of your paper in the top left square. I want you to write this word mischief. Okay. And then on the top right hand square, you are going to write the word implore. On the top, on the front of your paper, bottom left square, you're going to write the word tremble. And on the bottom right hand square, you are going to write the word wander. Okay, now let's flip our paper over. We are going to use the other side for two more vocabulary words and the moral of the story. Okay, so on the um, back of your paper in the top left hand square, you're going to write the word scutter. And in the top right hand square, you're going to write the word dose. Now at the bottom, we're going to use both of those squares for the moral of our story. So you'll write on the bottom half moral of the story. Now go ahead, when you're finished, and of course if you need to pause me, you may. When you're finished, I want you to hold your paper up and show me. Great job, friend. You made an excellent vocabulary graphic organizer. Okay, let's begin reading together. The Tale of Peter Rabbit, written and illustrated by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. 
If you know the names of the characters in this story, I want you to hop and down, up and down like a bunny rabbit would. Great job. What are the names of those characters in this story? Great listening. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, Peter, and their mother. Which names rhyme? Excellent scholar. Flopsy and Mopsy rhyme because they share the same ending sound. Opsy. Okay, now my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go in to Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Hmm, I just heard another name. Who is Mrs. Rabbit? Oh yes. That is right. Mrs. Rabbit is the mother of Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. What does Mrs. Rabbit warn her children about? Correct. Mrs. Rabbit warns her children, do not go in to Mr. McGregor's garden. Let's keep reading. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Hmm, I read one of our vocabulary words. Can you tell me which word it is? When you hear the vocabulary word, I want you to hop like a rabbit. Let's read this page together. Now run along and don't get into mischief. Very good. I am going out. Great hopping. Now say the word aloud. Yes, mischief. Very good. Can you tell what mischief means from this sentence? Hmm, this one's kind of difficult. Mrs. Rabbit told her children not to get into mischief. So it must not be a good thing. Mischief is playful misbehavior, or troublemaking. So it's doing something bad. Can you think of an example of mischief? I'm thinking that whispering to your neighbor while your teacher is talking would be an example of mischief. Tell me your example of mischief. Interesting. Okay, let's go back and reread this page and see what Mrs. Rabbit said about the other things the children can do and the things the children are not allowed to do. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. What are the children allowed to do? Yes, they can go into the fields and they can go down the lane. What are they not allowed to do? Correct. The children are not allowed to go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Would it be bad to disobey their mother to go in the garden? Yes, it would be bad to go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Going into Mr. McGregor's garden would be an example of... Hop, if you know the word. Say it out loud. Yay, mischief. Nice, got, nice going. You got it. Let's say the word together. Going into, let's say that whole sentence together. Going into Mr. McGregor's garden would be an example of mischief. Excellent work, scholar. I want you to get out your vocabulary graphic organizer. And in the section that says mischief, I want you to sketch or quickly draw a picture that will help you remember what the word mischief means. Playful misbehaving or troublemaking. You can draw the example that I gave you or your own example. Now, as I draw, you can draw. And then when you're finished, you can show your picture to me. I have drawn a picture of students talking while their teacher is talking. That was the example that I gave. If you didn't have enough time, it's okay. You can always pause the television or the video. So then Mrs. old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Hop if you've ever tasted a currant. A currant is a small dried fruit. It is a tangy berry, but that when dried like a raisin, often baked into a bread. Let's keep reading together. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Did those, boys and girls, did those bunnies obey Mrs. Rabbit? Yes, the children were allowed to go down the lane. But Peter, 
who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Oh my, what did Peter do? Yes, he went to Mr. McGregor's garden. What word are you thinking of? Peter is getting into hop, if you know the word. Yes, Peter is getting into mischief. I wonder what will happen to a rabbit who gets into mischief in Mr. McGregor's garden. What do you think will happen? Interesting. Let's keep reading to find out. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Can you see Peter's shoe? If you see Peter's shoe, twitch your nose like a rabbit. It's difficult to twitch or wiggle your nose, but it's fun to try. Now you try it. All right. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Hmm, what's a gooseberry net? Well, I know a gooseberry is a fruit. My friend has a garden, and she puts a net over her strawberries to keep the birds out so they can't eat them. When I look at this picture of Peter, it looks like the same kind of net that is meant to keep birds and other small animals away from fruits and vegetables. Peter's mischief has gotten him into a terrible situation. I wonder what happens next. Let's keep reading. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Did you hear a vocabulary word? Wiggle your nose if you heard that vocabulary word. Yes, say the word out loud. Implore. Let's reread to see if there are any clues to help us figure out this word. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Oh my, how very sad. We read that the sparrows flew to him in great excitement, so that's a lot of emotion. From the picture, it looks like they are talking to Peter. Maybe implore means talking to? But what are they saying? implored him to exert himself. So exert is another tough word. It means to try harder. So the birds excitedly flew down and told Peter to try harder. This is a very emotional part of the story because Peter's crying and he has given up. To implore is actually to beg someone to do something. The birds really, really want Peter to try harder. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. The birds begged him to try harder. Implore is a wonderful word filled with lots of emotion. I am glad this word is on our vocabulary list. It's time to quickly sketch another picture. Under the word implore, what should we draw to help us remember what that word means? I'm going to draw a man on his knees begging. You can use my example or you can use your own. Remember, if you need more time, you can pause the video at any time. Implore. I drew a man on his knees begging. Okay, let's keep reading. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve. Which he, handed, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. What is a sieve? Can the picture give us a hint? A sieve is a strainer used to drain liquids 
from solids. It is a colander that is used while cooking spaghetti. It looks like a bowl, but it has holes in it. Have you ever seen that? That looks like what Mr. McGregor is holding. That would be a quick and safe way to catch a rabbit because the rabbit could still breathe if he was caught. But Peter is lucky that he wiggled out before being trapped. But what did he lose, boys and girls? Yes, he's lost his new jacket. So he has no shoes and no jacket. Uh-oh. Do you think Peter will get out of this garden? Let's keep reading to see if he escapes. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in that tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Curdy Jew! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot on top upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. Did you hear a vocabulary word? Hop if you heard it. What was the word? Excellent. Trembling. That is a tricky one. We wrote tremble on our vocabulary graphic organizer, but this story uses the word trembling. I-N-G is a suffix that lets me know that this word is probably a verb. Now, a verb is an action word, so that's a clue for us to find the meaning of trembling. When we add the I-N-G, we are saying that that action is happening right now, okay? So I can write, but what would I say if I'm doing it right now? I am writing. Very good. So we know you have hopped earlier today. See what I did there? I added an ED to the end of that word because it's already happened. It's in the past, okay? So if I'm doing it right now, I am hopping. Nice hopping. Good job, boys and girls. So the ending of a word, trembling, gives us the clue that this word is an action word. So let's reread this sentence to find out more. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. He was also very damp with sitting in that can. Hmm. Peter's out of breath. To be frightened is to be scared, so Peter's scared. Maybe tremble means to shake. I shake when I'm scared. He's also wet, and I definitely shake when I'm cold and wet. Do you agree trembling means to shake? Okay, so what will you draw on your vocabulary organizer to help you remember the meaning of the word tremble? I'm going to draw a leaf because that indicates um, that sometimes when a leaf blows in the wind, it shakes. And so what I'm going to do to show that it's trembling or shaking, I think I'm going to draw some lines coming off of my leaf, which indicates that those leaves are shaking. Okay, we have another vocabulary word too. Listen as I reread and twitch your nose like a rabbit when you hear it. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. Yes, the word is wander. What do you think it means? We know that Peter is lost. He's looking all around. He doesn't know which way to go. Hmm, in your own words, what do you think it means to wander? To wander is to walk around or move without knowing your direction. Where, what are we going to draw to help us remember the meaning of the word wander? I am going to draw someone with a question mark above her head. She's walking. Okay, so you can use my illustration or you can come up with your own example. But remember, wander means I'm just walking around without knowing where I'm going. All right, let's keep reading. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. 
An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the woods. Peter asked her the way to get to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth, she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was the best way to go. It, Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Hmm, a hoe is a gardening tool used for weeding and breaking up the earth. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and he climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. I heard another vocabulary word, did you? Hop if you heard it. Yes, scuttered. This is another example of using that suffix or ending of a word to figure out what that word means. Scuttered has an ed, which means something's already happened. You hopped. The ed means you already hopped. It's in the past. Scutter must be an action since we add ed to verbs. Let's reread the passage to find more clues. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and he climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing his onions. His back was turned towards Peter and his, and beyond him was the gate. Have you ever seen a small animal get scared? Like a cat or squirrel or a, a rabbit? They move hurriedly in short steps. Peter was scared because the sound was so close. So he moved quickly with small steps to get under the bush. Get ready to draw again. I'm gonna draw a rabbit moving. Remember how I drew those lines to show the leaf moving? I'm gonna draw some lines behind the rabbit's back legs and in front of his front paw to show movement. You draw as I draw on my board. Great job, boys and girls. Now let's keep reading to see if Peter can escape the garden. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. Where did those little jacket and shoes come from, boys and girls? Kiss your brain. You remember that Peter lost his shoes and jacket in the garden when he was trying to escape. Now, he was so tired that he flopped down upon a nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. And what he had done with his clothes, what had he done with his clothes? It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that he had lost in a fortnight. <gasps> I heard a word I recognize, fortnight. Do you know what fortnight means? Here's a hint, it's not a video game. Fortnite actually means two weeks. Okay, so can we? what can we infer about Peter's character that he has lost uh, the second jacket and the second pair of shoes in two weeks? Right, we might be able to use one of our vocabulary words in our response. Wiggle your nose like a rabbit if you hear me say a vocabulary word. Peter must get into a lot of mischief if his mother had to buy new jackets and shoes for him that often? That was a super tough question. Let's keep reading together, boys and girls. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. 
Hmm, what's a dose? Well, first we need to know that chamomile tea is a drink that makes people sleepy. Let's reread it to see if there are some clues to help us figure out what a dose is. His mother put him to bed and made him chamomile tea and gave him, she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful is the dose that he had to take, right? So, hmm, what does a dose mean? Yes, it's a certain measured amount of something. I've heard that before. Have you? When you give someone medicine, you give them a dose of it. It is a certain amount of it. So what are we going to draw on our vocabulary organizer that will help us remember what a dose is? I think I'm going to draw a spoonful of medicine. All right, boys and girls, when you have your sketch ready to go, let's read the ending together. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. What a wonderful story. We learned so much about Peter through his adventure and mischief. What is the moral of the story? Well, before you answer that, let's look back at a few of the events in the beginning, in the middle, and the end of this story to help us determine the moral of the story. So what happened at the beginning of the story, boys and girls? Here's a hint. You can use one of your vocabulary words when you tell me about it. Correct. Peter's mother went to the bakery. She warned the children not to get into any mischief. What happened during the middle? Use as many vocabulary words as you can. Wonderful job remembering the important details. Peter gets into mischief by going to Mr. McGregor's garden. He's almost caught and trembles. He, is, he has to scutter to escape. He loses his new jacket and shoes. And what happens at the end, boys and girls? Hmm, those are the clues about our moral of our story. Peter makes it home, but he doesn't feel well. His mother gives him a dose of tea and puts him to bed as Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail get bread and milk with blackberries. When you think about the details of the tale of Peter Rabbit, what do you think the moral of the story is? Do you think the moral of the story is to always play with your brothers and sisters? Or do you think the moral of the story is there are consequences if you break the rules? I think you're right. I think the moral of the story is that there are consequences if you break the rules. Now, you can record that on your organizer if you need to now. There are consequences if you break the rules. Boys and girls, now it's going to be your turn to demonstrate your understanding of the tale of Peter Rabbit. You will respond to a question by writing the answer on a piece of paper. You need to write your answer in complete sentences. Remember, a complete sentence has a subject, a verb, it makes sense, it has a capital letter, and an end mark. I will read the prompt to you, but if you want to pause the screen and take a picture of it, you can, okay? So in complete sentences, in complete sentences, retell the important details from the tale of Peter Rabbit. Describe the moral of the story. One more time. In complete sentences, retell the important details from the tale of Peter Rabbit. Describe the moral of the story. Don't forget to use your vocabulary words from your vocabulary organizer. I enjoyed working on learning new vocabulary words and determining the moral of the tale of Peter Rabbit with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's at-home learning series. Bye-bye. <laughs>